In this video, we are going to migrate our existing Angular signup app to Angular 14 so that we can use the new Angular typed forms feature. In this process, we are also going to see how to ease the migration to Angular typed form and what benefit it brings for us. Hey everyone, I'm Zweb Khan and welcome back to my channel. Angular 14 was an exciting new release because it finally brought out the Angular typed forms. But how do we go about using them? In this video, I'll show you exactly how to do it along with some tips and tricks to help you to make your form code better. So let's get started. So first I'll refer you to the official introduction video on Angular typed forms by the Angular team in case you know, need to know the basics of Angular typed forms. In short though, Angular typed forms means that every control in your app is going to have a specific type which will be enforced by TypeScript at compile time. This is going to save us nasty bugs at runtime. So let's first open our, our existing app. This is the same app we created as part of the Angular signup with Firebase series. It has three reactive forms. As you can see, the login form, the profile form, and the signup form, which we can use to test the upgrade to type forms. So to do that, we'll first update our app to the latest Angular 14 version. We'll go to update.angular.io and follow the instructions to upgrade from 13 to 14. We are also going to check I use angular material here because we are using material components. Then we are just going to copy these commands from here and paste it into our terminal. Great! We have upgraded to angular 14. Now we will run the update to angular material. Ok great! So uh, material version is also updated. So now let's run our app to see if it works. Ok so let's see the login page. Let's try logging in. Great, so the app works fine. But let's go into our code now and see what the update actually did. So as you can see, to ensure backwards compatibility, the migration process converted our form groups to untyped form group and the form control to the untyped form control for the time being so that our app works smoothly. We can then convert it into typed forms whenever we want. So let's first see what we mean by untyped here. So if we for example go into ng on init and we try to access the login form and its value here and we uh, try to access something within it we don't see the values of the controls here and if you try to value uh, try to access the value of one of the controls here we don't see its type it's any as you can see as a result we can actually assign a wrong type of the value to the control and we won't know anything till runtime so if for example we do set value and we try to enter a number value to the email which we have kept as a string, we can actually do that and nobody is going to tell us and we won't know anything till runtime. So typed forms changes all that and for the better. So let's try updating the untyped form group to form group. Here we are going to make it form group and for the form control we are going to untype to the form control. So these are the typed versions in Angular 14. Great, so let's check the type of the control by hovering over the email here for example. As you can see now it has a form control with a value uh, with a type of string or null. So how did it figure out what type to give this control first of all? This is derived from the initial value which we gave here which was an empty string. Now we can also give it an explicit type here like this but in most cases you won't need this and it's actually pretty handy that it actually figures it out itself. So we have our type forms now. Now let's check out the value of our type form group and see what we get. So removing this let's see if we if we do this dot login form dot value we can see that we get our two controls here and when we try to access a form controls value for example the email we can see the type here is string null or undefined. We'll come to undefined and null in a bit and why they're here. But let's first try to set a value on the form group and see what happens. So if we go and do set value as we did before and we set a value email of a number, we are going to get an error straight away. The type number is not assignable to type string. Great, and we can get this error even before compilation. So it makes your forms more resilient and provides a good check that you are assigning and using values correctly in your forms. But we still have an apparent issue and that is why do we see a null and undefined in the types here when we clearly set an initial value of an empty string here. Well, these two types are there for different reasons. So let's first consider null. So null is there because a form or a control can be reset. For example, if we do login form dot reset and we don't give any parameters here, it's going to reset the state of the form to the default value, which is null. For every control, the default value is uh, by default null. This means that every control's value can be null at some point. But in our case, this doesn't make sense because our initial value will be an empty string. So we don't really want reset to set the value to null. Instead, we'd like it to be an empty string or the initial value. We can do this with a flag called non-nullable. Let's add this flag here. So we're going to add an object here in the options 
and um, the validators we are going to copy in like we had before and then we are going to add the non-nullable parameter next we are going to say true the same thing we are going to do with the password and as we form this uh, as we add this non-nullable flag to both of these controls you can quickly see that we only have the string type here now we don't have null great this is exactly what we needed you'll notice though that adding non-nullable to each of your form controls can get a bit repetitive. So let's clean this up by using a non-nullable form builder. A form builder is a service or a class which allows us to use a shorthand syntax to specify forms. Angular also provides a non-nullable version of the form builder and this will cause all of our controls to be non-nullable by default. So let's include the non-nullable form builder here and then use it for our login form. So if you're going to do it, we are going to say login form this.fb.group to represent a form group. And inside of it, we are just going to do email. This would be this dot p or rather we can directly give it an array structure, the initial value and the validators here next then for the password we can do the same initial value and the validators great and then we can remove this here and here as well you can see as we can test it again that if we now go into login form and we go into our value we can see the email has a type of string and undefined that means it's non-null by default notice how this is much cleaner than uh, how we did it previously Great. Now that that is done, let's look at the undefined type and why we get it in our form groups value here. This is simply because we can remove a control from a form group and also disable it during the working of our app. And if that happens, the value of the form control will become undefined. So Angular has added undefined as a possible type to the value of any control in a form group such as here. And it is because of that type that we can see a small red error here right below when we are calling the login function. Now our login function here accepts a string as you can see. But Angular says that the email is of type string and undefined. Now since these don't match, we get this error. So how do we fix this? Well, my way is that I add a specific check for the value of the email and the password just like I do with the form validity here. So I'll add or email or password and I'm going to shift this email password above here. Okay. And then the error disappears. Once I add the email and password to the check here, the error goes away because till the point where we call login here, the email and the password will definitely not be undefined. And as you can see, it shows just the type of string and it gives no TypeScript errors anymore. Great. So as you can see, Angular typed forms sort of forces us to add a bit of extra checks to our apps to handle all of the edge cases that our forms can have. Now you may consider it an extra overhead or boilerplate and if you do, then you can easily switch back to the untyped forms. But if you want to make your app more resilient to runtime errors, typed forms will nudge you in the right direction uh, at development time. And what about my app? So I'm just going to save the login uh, form here and I'm going to do all that I did here in the other forms as well. So the login works okay with no TS errors now and I'm going to move on to the profile form. So if I go to the profile form, I'm going to refactor the things just like I did it before. Let's just do it quickly here. Okay. So as you can see, uh, this looks much cleaner than before. And let's see if we have any errors. So yes, we have an error in profile data here. And specifically, it says that the types of property UID are incompatible. Uh, string undefined is not assignable to type string. That means that uh, the type that we are expecting in update user function here, which is the profile user, here we have uh, all of the other parameters are optional. That means they allow undefined, but UID does not allow undefined. So uh, to handle this, we can use the same method as we did before. So to do that, First, we are going to destructure and get our UID here and let's call the rest of the items here data. Then we are going to add a check here for whether UID is false. Now we can do uh, either we can return the function here and do nothing or we can also add a toast message here uh, telling the user what has happened and there is an error. Uh, because the UID was somehow undefined, but let's leave it like that here. So now here, what we're going to do is we are going to just define the UID and the data. So this will be an object. And as you can see, the error is gone. So now the UID is string and the data in the rest of the data is the same type as it was before. Great. So the error is solved now. Now let's go to our sign up form and just do that quickly as well. We go to this time of form. Let's do the same thing here. Sign up form. This dot fb dot group. Great. This is done as well. And as you can see, it's much cleaner. And then let's see the error as well here. And we get almost a similar error here. So we are just going to use the same way that we did before. We're going to do this. And we are going to add checks for all of the fields that can be undefined. And the error is removed. Great. Okay, so now when we run our app, ng-serve, 
open let's see whether it works correctly or not great so my app is now updated to the latest angular 14 just like that and if you want to go log out we can just test in the login page to see whether it works and there are no errors great we can go to the profile page and change stuff here save it great so that's just about it i hope you like this short introduction to angular type forms in angular 14 and if you did be sure to subscribe to my channel for more such videos thanks for watching